Today is not a normal day at the airport. It's a really exciting day. You guys ready? Jesse's had his private pilot's license for four months now, and to get some experience under his and our belts, we've been renting a plane. We've already made some awesome memories in the rental, and have flown enough to realize that it is indeed something we'll continue to work into our lives, as aviation has already opened up a lot of doors for us. The decision to buy or rent isn't always an obvious one. Buying certainly doesn't make sense for everybody, but all things considered, we decided that for us personally, it made sense to start going down the ownership route. We know you can't just run down to Planes RS to buy a plane. I mean, I guess you could, at the cost of maybe half million dollars or so for a new plane. Do they even have Cessna dealerships? We thought, what if we could find a quality, older Cessna 182 to give us a foot in the door with aviation that can grow with us and our family as we explore the sky? Oh, a break. It's a break. I see where he redid the wheel bearings recently. Loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, these are one of the nicer audio pads. And you already did a flight control check uh, in the hangar there. Yep. Okay. The yoke is sure busted up, isn't it? In fact, somebody even, it's so busted up they even epoxied it or something. So, um, looks like a good company put these in. Okay. But all checks okay. Yeah, that's all good. Well, most airplanes, the deflection, full deflection of the aileron matches the flaps for okay. 20 for best takeoff. Yeah, okay. these actually take off pretty good. That wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Oh, we get for RPM. I was thinking to do a lot better than that for light fuel. There's definitely a vibration. Yeah, do you feel it too? I have a feeling if we bring the RPM back, it'd get better. Lighten up, lighten up a little bit. But, okay. Probably, you know, prop balance issue. Okay. We fired the traffic pattern and we're heading to the uh, west. All right, let's see what she does for speed. We had it up to about uh, 140. Doing about 108. 108 one way, 142 knots the other. Horns coming on about 65. I'm surprised. I don't have any flaps on. Whoa. Feel kind of, feel that drag when I touch down? Yeah, it's like like it swerved to yeah. the right a little bit. Yeah. The brake maybe was sticking. Taking the runway, runway two, and we'll be uh, just uh, taxiing at this time. Pretty strong crosswind, huh? Yeah, I think that might have been part of what we were dealing with. It's almost a direct crosswind. Yeah, 330. Well. Not really helping us or hurting us too much, huh? Not too much, yeah. Boy. Not even getting full RPM. Took almost a thousand feet to take off. Yeah, instead of 600 and something. Yeah, but that's with a little headwind. Yeah, true. And we're not full fuel, we're almost full fuel. We're probably 60. 65 gallons or something. Right. Two so people. Two people full fuel. I mean, we're not, definitely not heavy, but we're not light either. So our speed was 108 knots, 142. So 100. And yeah, there's a two, four, 34 knot difference. So 
Tide 17, uh, 125. Well, anyway, I'm just trying to think, is it low on power or am I just imagining it, you know? Uh-huh. Seems like the takeoff was kind of low. But, you know, that's probably as much as our airplane will do. I just kind of, my J that I used to have seemed like it was a little bit faster. Very interesting first flights. Definitely learning a lot about how to kind of quantify an airplane and what to look for, characteristics, personality, how it flies. And let's just say this airplane, it's an antique. It's gonna need some TLC and love. So today we're gonna learn whether or not this airplane is for us and whether it makes sense. Uh, anything this old is gonna need some work. So um, we've got some great mechanics that are working with us. They're gonna kind of walk us through that. They're gonna obviously be doing the majority of the work because they're required to do that, but they're willing to let us uh, jump in and help out, pull covers, and uh, kind of go through this pre-buy together. And hopefully today we'll learn a lot about this 182, about 182s in general. And hopefully within the day or maybe tomorrow, we'll find out whether this airplane makes sense for our family. Top's clear. That checks the prop RPM. I mean, which is what we're showing down here too, obviously, but. Yeah, this electronically checks it. The two-bladed prop or three? It's two, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simulate a takeoff, we'll abort, but basically see if it's just a, uh, the prop's not capable or, okay, what, what's going on? We'll see if it goes to 2600, you know, when I increase my airspeed to 30, well, let's go to 60 and then we'll abort, okay? So you wanna watch that? Yep, got it. We're at 2600 now. Okay, so that's, we're getting all of our RPM, just not reading that way on the tag. Okay, so that's good news. I mean, yeah. sort of. Yeah. So but it doesn't account for why we don't have any power, but. Yeah, it seems like it's still a little bit low on, I don't know, you know, it probably, it may not be. The 2500, those 2600, huh? Yeah, we got 2600 right on, right on 26. Okay. All right, music mixture master mags, huh? Uh, clear so far. Yep, clear. Good, straight back probably. Okay, good. Well guys, we've been working on taking the plane apart here for probably an hour and a half or two. Uh, just kind of taking inventory, looking for common problems, and kind of getting a good good feel for where the airplane's at. Um, it's not a perfect airplane, but we knew that, right? That's not a shocker. Uh, but I think it really helps to have a good list, and Alyssa and I are learning a lot. She joined me a little bit ago. She's been helping me pull covers, looking for corrosion. Um, we've gone through some diagnostics on the engine, and um, it just gives us a better feel for where the, the engine's at, kind of a good health check. Did some compression testing. Um, even got grease all over me already. <laughs> um, checked cylinders for compression. Um, we're doing some oil analysis. Did a boroscope. Stuff like that. Techie stuff. And uh, hopefully by probably noon, another hour or so, I think we'll, we'll know pretty well where the airplane's at. And then, well, I guess we'll have to talk to the owner and go from there. See if it's something that they're willing to work with us on or if it's just, if it's just too much. Maybe that's them right there. <laughs> Alyssa thinks that there's still TSA at this airport, so she has to like knock six times and say the password. I opened it and I pushed it just a little bit and I was like, oh, it's locked. Yeah, knock any knock knock, knock knock knock. Part of what we're learning today is what's acceptable and unacceptable wear and tear on an airplane. These are the wing flaps, or flaps, and the rivets are showing signs of cracking. And that's normal, 
given the age of the aircraft and their location but they've been stop drilled to try to stop the crack from moving forward unfortunately there's just too many of them that have been stop drilled so basically all of them and that's just not going to work so this skin and probably the upper skin will need to be replaced on this flap this airplane does have a stole kit on it which includes the stall fences it also has a leading edge cuff that's uh, not factory um, right here and kind of just changes the wing uh, front a little bit and also has some wing tips that are aftermarket that are also part of the stole kit we're just giving those a close look because the company that makes them does still uh, have parts available so if there was damage or anything that needed to be repaired they could be replaced but you know it's something that we want to look at in considering whether or not to purchase an aircraft with a stole kit this airplane does have a set of strobes on it which with night flying are super helpful and even sometimes in low visibility daytime conditions it's got them on the wing tips and on the tail and i can tell you from flying at night it's really nice when somebody's got those so you can see them coming so it looks like from talking with the mechanics and going through the log books the, the log history is not perfect um, it's definitely an issue uh, it looks like several of the annuals in the airplane's history were not that great rubber stamp we'll call it that so it just kind of puts you on your heels a little bit and makes you want to do a little bit more due diligence we're certainly not trying to tear this airplane down to every rivet I think we're just trying to get a good idea where to start with the airplane. What we're buying or what we want to buy, just yeah. have full disclosure. And it's the first one we've looked at at this level of detail. So it's a big commitment though. We're learning and it's a huge commitment and you're buying a, a project. I mean, even if you buy a good airplane, they cost money to fly. Helpful to, to get an airplane in the hangar and start going through this stuff with a mechanic and, and it's good that we're working together. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> this is learning a lot, which is nice. I mean, I'm definitely in over my head, but I mean, I know basically what to look for. So this is exciting and scary. I mean, you wish it was like a perfect airplane, but, but it's what, 50, is there, 60 years old, is there so. one, in, is there one on this airport that's perfect? No. All right, guys, we're going to spend some time, quality time with the airplane. Check back with you soon. How many hours later? It's been a while. Later. It's been a while. So we've kind of reached a point where major crossroads, and by major I mean major. We're gonna go chat for a little bit, get a bite to eat. We've had the powwow, the group meeting, we've had the conference call, we've had <laughs> all of the above, and we act we actually got to spend some time with the owner of the plane, which was really great. He came by, and we got to share with him a lot of the stuff that we're looking at. And well, in a nutshell, it doesn't look good. In fact. It looks pretty bad. I think the lesson of today is that if we're serious about buying a plane, it's going to be a challenge. It's, it's a ride. It's going to be a lot of work, yeah. which I don't think anyone would tell you otherwise. No, and it's it's a bit of a struggle. I mean, it just sounds good to buy a plane, doesn't it? Sounds really good. Kind of rolls off your tongue. Oh, we're going to buy an airplane. Um, turns out buying an airplane is about like buying a house or a car or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Anyway, so we're going to go catch some dinner and uh, then we're going to make a decision and we'll kind of figure out where the heck to go from here. It's a good plan. You'll either have to stick around or don't. Wow, we missed out on a really beautiful day outside. My gosh, we've been stuck in a hangar all day. Soon, skies, we, we shall return soon. Well guys, we made the hard decision and after dinner and a debate, we decided to pass on this airplane. It just didn't seem worth it to adopt the problems that it has. I think it's a nice looking airplane. It needs some work, but don't all old airplanes need work? So I'm back at the hangar today. I'm gonna help the mechanics get it all put back together so it can go home. And then we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and see what's next. Probably gonna leave their electrical tape shimming on there, huh? <laughs> it's hard to believe that we 
went for a hundred years with a standard screw. Yeah. <laughs> Until someone said, hey, you know, that's, that's not the bestest. No well, guys, there it is, the plane that wasn't meant to be. We invested a lot of time into this guy and uh, you know the owner came by and spent some time going through it with us and, and I think even though it was an expensive lesson for us, I, I know he learned a lot too. I guess if I was him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in this situation where for the first time someone went through the airplane and we didn't even go through it completely. We just, we got to a point where it didn't make sense to go any further. And I'm really proud of Alyssa and I for dealing with this well and you know emotionally it's really hard. I'll say that. I think airplanes are a very emotional thing for a lot of us. They don't make any sense at all. They're not logical. They're just, they're a love affair. There, I said it. Anyway, so the gentleman's going to take this plane home tomorrow and it'll go off into the skies and we may or may not ever see him again. But I think the important thing is, I think we've kept the relationship intact. And Alyssa and I have learned a lot. We're going to keep on our hunt and hopefully at some point we'll find an airplane that makes sense for our family. And when we're cruising at 10,000 feet, we'll feel good about the decision. possibly share all the details of the plane buying experience in one video, but very, very long story short, there was a plane for sale at our local airport that we'd already flown in, but weren't immediately interested in as we wanted to take a look at other planes. Well, after some water under the bridge, we decided to take a closer look at the plane since A, it was hangered at our local airport, B, the local mechanics were already familiar with the plane as they were the ones to give it its recent annual. C, we knew the seller personally, and D, the general consensus was that it was a great plane. It didn't have the avionics we were hoping for, unlike the blue plane, but the plane overall was in better condition, and avionics upgrades can be done at a later point. We decided to take it out for a second test drive on a calmer day to scrutinize it a little more thoroughly. All things considered, we had high hopes for this plane penciling out for us, and the idea that it was in our backyard was highly attractive. Here's to another day spent trying to decide if this was to be the plane that would be a good purchase for us. Would this be the plane we would create memories in for the many years to come? All right, guys, it's all fueled up and ready to go, but I've got to wait. I'm waiting on an instructor to go with me. We can put the plane through its paces. We've already done all the other due diligence. The buyer's reasonable and it's windy today. I hope the wind dies down a little bit. So until he's ready to go, I'm gonna chop some vegetables. <laughs> Doesn't that sound fun? Well, I got all the tomatoes done. I know, cutting tomatoes in an airport, right? <laughs> well, you do what you gotta do and you gotta multi-tax. So I got all the tomatoes cut and Alyssa told me that we're gonna be filling both 
of our large Bayou Classic pots just to make this salsa. Holy smokes, that's a lot. I didn't get to the tomatillos or the peppers, and Alyssa, you're gonna be mad at me for that, I'm sorry. I've been hustling, doing the best I can. So Alyssa's on her way to come get all the food. I'm gonna jump in the plane and we're gonna go give it a quick test flight. And then hopefully I can get home and help Alyssa knock out all this salsa verde. And I think we're making tomatillo salsa. Although I don't know if we're gonna get all that done tonight. Dude. Dude. It's freaking insane. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's not all of them, by the way. That's 144 cups. Yeah, there's another little bowl about yay big. Oh my god, got, I can't handle so it. So it's probably like another quart oh, and a half or god. two. And there's the rest of the guys. Wow. Um, so Cuban or uh, garden salsas are okay. right there. Um, I didn't get to them. Okay. Um, and I have the tomatillos in the pickup. Do you want to just leave those in the pickup for now? Um, I'll take them just in case. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't mind helping with the onions. I guess this is that moment where I wish we would have bought the industrial chopper. I know. We'd be done okay. with onions so fast. That's why I say that the tomatillos probably aren't going to get done. There's a lot yeah. of prep still and it'll be a miracle if we can get all this done tonight. I know what you should do. When you're at the grocery store, mm -hmm. go into the food prep section and see if they have a commercial dicer. If they do, buy it. You stick a whole They're onion. They're not going to. Ah, I don't know. Look, look, it's worth it. All right. It's time to go fly. Like these old in over five, two, three, three, seven. But guess what? I'm thinking, I mean, that's not like, this is not a big deal, but yep. you know, these are good. The seats move nice on these rails, you know, they move, yeah. You know, they got new rollers. I think that was one of the things we fixed. <laughs> Nice and tight on the rudder to spring linkage. Like, uh, turn coordinator is good, attitude indicator is alive. Lock doesn't work or does work? Um, you know, that one I think does. Yeah, it is running. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. At 25 and 25, huh? Yep, 25, 25. Not different than a 185, huh? Yeah. Oh, I don't have any flaps on, no wonder. I'm falling apart. And that should be jumping into the air. Okay. But not without any flaps. Right, right, right. Caution, terrain. Oh, so the GPS is tied in for audibles. Yep. Nice. Okay. I guess that's not I so evil. I like that. I think I would, yeah, like you say, if you got an iPad, but... Well, I'll probably get it mounted in the dash. I think yeah. it's good for the passenger to have access to GPS, too. That's good, too. That makes them feel good. All right, so I'll slow it down and try some balls. Okay, we're outside the green. Put it on down. Where it stalls with, uh, on the end there, at least out flaps and see how it feels. Rubber waving in the... Do some clearing turns. docile stall, huh? Pretty good. What do we get? About 50? Yep. I didn't look at that, but... And let's go ahead and go full flaps then. 40 indicated. Uh, 56 on the ground. It's got a really nice stall, both with and without flaps. So yep, I agree. Really nice. Feels really nice in a turn. Look at that. Yeah. Feels really... Really nice. I don't know, I think that's a nice flying airplane. So far it seems nice. That's what 75 feels like. Looks like. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a weird feeling. Ooh. You thought you were straight, but you're a little crooked. It can't, probably a little bit. It's still crooked. When you want to turn, it feels like it's going to tip over. The airplane feels, I don't know, for me, that's what it feels like. Yeah, I got a lot, lots happening, like a different airplane, different sight picture, oh, yeah. right seat. Right so. seat, that's what. But you did great. Oh, it's not too bad. Saved it. Yeah. I had a heart attack over here. You, I know. <laughs> it's not a good thing to do to your instructor. <laughs> Kill oh, the guy. No, no. <laughs> Kill me at all. Uh, so we'll turn the avionics off. Okay. Are they up there? No, I think it's good. I mean, let's place a start. 
Um, yeah, I think with the engine prop governor, that's he. That's as you know, as nice as the radios. It is. It's the same oh, money. It's just seats, a matter of where. I, I, I gotta know, get ours right? fixed, man. Yeah, those are nice. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll probably try to exchange notes with you. I got a few, but no, I think all little stuff. You know, and I'll I bet probably we... do this with any airplane I get in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we probably could have thrown the cow flaps closed to get another mile or two an hour. Oh, but I didn't I think, have them closed? No, they were half, but that's, oh, that's probably not right. worth much. No, it's true. Maybe a mile an hour, maybe. It's not slow. No, it's right in there. Yep. With, without the wheel pants, I'd expect about 145, 146. Wheel pants, maybe 150. Uh huh. Something like that. That's pretty believable, I think. Well, test flight went good. I think it's a good, honest airplane. I think this will serve our family really well. We have a long way to go with it. It needs some things in the avionics department, but as far as the prop engine, airframe, good, honest flying airplane. It was good to fly it again because we flew it before and I don't know, I didn't really have enough time in it to make a fair assessment and I think it's all there, but it is an antique. So we'll put it away for the night, go home, check on Alyssa, and hopefully tonight we'll have some salsa verde. But I think I have to make dinner because I'm sure she's up to her eyeballs and cutting onions right now. Uh, I probably look something like that. Soon. Soon. Holy guacamole. Did you clean out their onion section or no, I what? Didn't. I tried to go at half of them. Oh my gosh. That's what the gal that checked me out said. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's happening guys, it's happening. Pretty good. That's got to be over 10 gallons of salsa verde. I don't know, it better be on. My goodness. So I got bad news guys. Well, let me give you the good news first. That's a lot of salsa verde. The bad news is it's almost 10 o'clock. Alyssa's had a really long day. I've had a really long day. So I think even though we're go-getters, we're going to just get everything ready tonight and then we'll start tomorrow because we have to process all this stuff in the canner and if anything has to be reprocessed, it's gonna be two o'clock in the morning and that just sounds like no fun. So we're gonna get everything ready to light and then we'll start tomorrow. And don't forget, we still have all the tomatillos to work through. Is there anything else that we're working on? Is uh, that it? Those are the big things. I mean, That's I, need it. To cut the, I need to cut the peppers and oh, freeze, cut and them freeze them. Oh, cut and freeze them. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Yeah, when you go to like the average everyday supermarket and you buy things in canning quantities, every time the cashier gives you the weird looks. Five cups? Holy mackerel. There's like two cups in this thing. Yep. About all the lines in the head. <laughs> all right, we've given up on measuring. We're going straight for the squirted in method. Find garlic by the ton. I bought another one of these. Okay, yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, this is more green salsa than we could eat in probably over a year. Uh, probably two years. Probably two years, yeah. All right, that's five cups in that one. <laughs> My gosh.